All right. Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today for our webinar, Create a Culture of Kindness at Your School. My name is Sarah. I'm from McGraw-Hill Education, and I will be your moderator this afternoon or this morning, depending on where you're at. We are thrilled to have all of you, and we're so thankful that you've given us the opportunity to share some great initiatives for bringing kindness to your classroom or your school. In a moment, we're going to familiarize ourselves with the platform a little bit so you know what to expect. But first, allow me to quickly introduce our speakers. In this webinar, you're going to hear from Jill McManigal, the co-founder and executive director of Kids for Peace. Jill is going to go into detail about her fabulous program, the Great Kindness Challenge, and then provide you with some next steps if you would like to sign your learning community up for the event. And then you're going to be hearing from an amazing educator. Laurel Ferreira is an educator in California at a school that has been participating in the Great Kindness Challenge for quite some time now. Um, and then we're actually going to have Jill cover some um, content for Leah. Leah was not available to make us to make it with us anymore. She's going to be teaching a class today. Um, but we still wanted to get her story in there. So Jill's going to be talking about Leah, who has also done some fantastic things with the Great Kindness Challenge. Um, so both of these educators are really, you know, people that have taken um, their initiatives to the next level, and we're hoping that they can inspire you a little bit um, to, you know, sign up for the Great Kindness Challenge and then um, make it your own. So before we get started, we are going to take a moment to learn just a little bit about you through these polls. Um, so while you guys are all answering the poll, we're going to take a moment to start to familiarize ourselves. With the, uh, with the platform. I first want to direct you to the chat box, um, which you'll see technical support has posted in already. Um, that is for all of you to just contribute to as you wish. You are more than welcome to post uh, questions for the speakers, um, questions for technical support, questions for me, um, or if you just want to contribute to the larger conversation, everything you put in there is public. Um, so it's really just what you would expect the chat box to be. Um, so we're going to give one more moment here. Looks like everybody's almost done. Okay, moving on. Beautiful. So most of you have not yet participated in the Great Kindness Challenge, which is great. Um, we are so excited to have all of you, and we hope that by the end of this, you guys are all reared, ready to go to, uh, to sign up. Okay, our next question. Tell us a little bit more about you, about your role, what it is that you do. Um, give us an, an insight to why you're here. Um, and then while you answered that one, I want to direct your, question, your attention now to the Q&A box, which is sort of in the bottom right of your screen. Um, in this box, you're welcome to post questions that you have for uh, technical support, if you're having any issues on the back end, um, or if you just have questions for the speakers. Um, anything in there is fine, whatever feels good to you, just know that with this one, um, your questions are not going to be public. So if you have a speaker question, sometimes it's nice to put those in the public chat box. Um, that, you know, that works well for people. But either feature will be fine. And so that you're aware, in terms of questions for the speakers, feel free to ask them throughout the webinar. We'll likely address all of them at the end. But if things pop into your head as they're speaking, go ahead and post them in there, and um, we will get to all of them. Okay, I'm going to close this poll now, see what everyone's doing. And we have a beautiful amount of school counselors. How wonderful. You guys are great for this. We love it. We've got teachers and administrators. It's fantastic. Um, if you answered other, feel free to kind of expand on, on that in the chat box. Or if you just want to share your school, a lot of folks like to tell us where they're from, um, what they're doing. So, yeah, thanks, guys. And then we've got one more question here. Last, could you tell us what grade level is your school? And while you all respond to this one, I'm going to direct your attention to one more item. Um, at the top of your screen, there is a little icon that sort of looks like a stack of papers. That's your handouts button. Um, that one is going to have some fantastic resources from the speakers, some stuff from the Great Kindness Challenge that's really going to help you learn more. There's also some items in there um, from the learning scientists here at McGraw-Hill Education around um, social and emotional learning that I think would be helpful for you um, moving, moving down the road. And we also get some questions from folks usually around, you know, if the uh, speaker, if the slides are going to be available after this. So right now, I am dropping those in the chat box. Um, you're more than welcome to visit that link. Okay. 
I see some questions coming in. Um, I know there's, you know, issues every once in a while with audio, and, you know, usually the um, tech support will tell you guys to just refresh your browser. Um, so keep an eye out for that. We've got some folks from Grand Junction, Colorado. This is beautiful. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and close this poll. We have a lot of elementary school. That's wonderful. We are so happy to have you guys. And for middle school and high school, we're excited to have you guys too. We have noticed recently an uptick in people looking for kindness, empathy, and social and emotional learning resources um, for the older kiddos and those kinds of support. So, you know, it's really it's a, it's a K-12, K-20 effort. Um, it's really excited to see it grow. We are thrilled to have all of you here. Okay. Thank you guys, all of you, for contributing. And I'm going to go ahead and pass it off to Jill. Jill, take it away. Yes, good afternoon, everyone. I'm so thankful to have you be part of our webinar today. And um, Sarah, and we're so grateful to you at McGraw-Hill for being our partner once again in creating a kinder world. Um, it's been a wonderful partnership, and we're just excited to have this opportunity to work with you once again to expand this to so many schools. So thank you for that. And um, before I jump into our webinar goals, I did want to uh, make note of the wildfires that are happening in California right now. Um, we're actually based in California, and a lot of our schools are being affected. And actually, one of our schools um, that's participated in the Great Kindness Challenge for the past couple of years, um, Paradise Elementary, was actually burned to the ground. And so we we have um, really sad hearts about that right now, but I'm, um, I'm inspired to know that so many people are reaching out to us to see how they can support the schools um, that are being affected. And so we are doing a campaign called a Kind Cards campaign right now. It's a response to the fires. So anyone who's looking um, for a way to reach out to the wildfires, we'll be posting information on our Facebook page about how you can mobilize your community um, to support those who are affected by the wildfires right now. So I'm going to give an extra big dose of love sending out to um, everyone in California affected by the fires. Um, with that said, we'll move into the goals of the webinar. Um, we have two big goals. Our one is for, for you to learn about the Great Kindness Challenge and discover ways to implement it at your school. We're so thankful that so many of you have already done the Great Kindness Challenge. That's great. And um, we're excited that there's so many new, um, new people wanting to find out about it. And the other um, goal is for you to walk away with an uplifting plan and free tools to create a culture of kindness on your campus. Um, we're going to be going through um, why kindness is important, all about the Great Kindness Challenge, ways to keep it really simple or go big. We're going to he hear from Laurel uh, with her elementary school, um, one of the founding Great Kindness Challenge schools. We're going to, um, I'm going to speak for Leah. Um, she's a middle school um, counselor. I'm going to share examples of the amazing activities they've done for the past four years participating. We're going to give you ideas of one-week plans, um, how to engage your students and your whole community. We're going to tell you about our Kind Coins um, campaign this year, which is Kind Coins for Liberia, and our uh, family edition, ways to keep it going in your family, and then we'll um, end it up with some questions, and then we will be done. So first of all, people are wondering why we should even um, place value on kindness in the classroom. So there's a lot of studies now out um, showcasing the, the importance of kindness. Um, one studies show that, that kindness creates happiness, which is great. We know happy students learn better. Um, studies show that kindness is contagious. So when we focus on kindness, it naturally expands. And um, we've also found that kindness boosts health, and um, it's both the physical and psychological health, which is so important. Um, the, uh, kindness increases the well-being, popularity, and peer acceptance at schools. Um, we know that that's important for all students to feel accepted. And um, we find that kindness also enhances academic performance. And so this is a, just another tool to complete, um, have the whole child be addressed. And then kindness shows, kindness improves relationships. So it's another valuable tool in life to have good relationships. So kindness is a way to have that happen. Um, and then I believe this is the last one, is that kindness contributes to life success overall. So sometimes people see that, think that kindness is a bit soft, but there are some really substantial reasons to place a high value on kindness. Um, specifically, why kindness in schools? Um, the, the Department of Education two years ago um, put out a report, and it said 
that students learn best when they're in environments in which they feel safe, supported, challenged, and accepted. They're more likely to engage in the curriculum, achieve academically, and develop pro, um, positive relationships. Students are less likely to exhibit problem behaviors, teacher turnover is lower, and teacher satisfaction is higher. And so focusing on kindness helps to achieve all of that. Um, specifically, why the Great Kindness Challenge as a tool? Um, what we will be sharing more about, no matter what you are doing for your social emotional learning or your character education or bully prevention, the Great Kindness Challenge is a great um, addition to that. Um, so it's something that can be um, just another added benefit to your um, current your current curriculum. And we found that 93% of participants um, showed an improvement in school climate, and 71% um, stated there was an increase in staff morale. So we also know happy educators help to create um, more uh, happier students. So other little other notes from our um, surveys over the years that elevates uh, elevate school climate and unites the community. The Great Kindness Challenge decreases bullying and increases compassion. It minimizes behavioral referrals and it makes kindness a habit. So what is the Great Kindness Challenge? Um, the Great Kindness Challenge is a one-week nationwide proactive positive empowering kindness initiative. It's for pre-K through high school. Um, it's for schools, it's free, so there's no cost for any of the programs, and it's really easy to implement. And um, it actually says nationwide here, but it is global as well. We have this last year, we had 103 countries participating. It's all based on a kindness checklist. For the older students, it's a 50 item kindness checklist. The students get that checklist on Monday and they're challenged to complete as many acts of kindness by Friday. The um, pre-K pre through second graders can use the junior edition and that's nine acts um, with an illustrated checklist. And we also have it available in an app for the older students. And it's basically that checklist in action on the app. So it's a very simple program, um, simple to implement, but it has a really powerful impact because it gives every single student in the school an opportunity to be part of creating that culture of kindness. Um, many teachers and educators over the years and counselors over the years have stated that it's the happiest week of the year, um, both for the educators and for, for the students themselves. Um, our 2018 impact, so last year we had over 10 million students participate, 10, um, 10 and a half million. There were nearly 20,000 schools that were part of the Great Kindness Challenge. Over half a million acts of kindness were completed, and we had 103 countries that participated in the last year's Great Kindness Challenge. This is um, really exciting because it grew from just three schools back in um, eight, eight years ago. This will be our eighth year. So it started with just three schools, Laurel, who, who you'll be hearing from, was one of the founding schools, um, which is actually the school that my children went to, and um, be, mostly through grassroots efforts and word of mouth from educators that it has grown to be such a massive movement within our educational systems now. And um, as you educators know that teachers don't, and educators don't share with other schools something that's not working. And we think it's such a testament itself to, to the power of the program that so many um, educators share it with the other schools. The next year's theme, or this year's, this coming up year's theme, um, every year we try to find a new focus within the Great Kindness Challenge and it helps to keep it fresh and just um, respond to the times. So this year, our theme is connect through kindness. Um, with the current, um, the, the current mood of, of our country, um, we've noticed that there has been um, quite a bit of division out there and people are looking for um, a, a way to come together, especially all of you educators. If you're already on this, um, at this webinar, you know the value of being proactive and, in creating positive environments. And so we are gonna be focusing on connecting through kindness, finding ways to bring the students together, bringing the communities together. Um, we have a lot of fun fun um, activities. We're gonna be doing a great kindness quilt. We're gonna send a quilt around the country, adding um, patches on it from um, school to school. So we'll be sharing more of those fun ideas with you. But that is our idea to connect through kindness. Um, how do you bring it to your school? It's very simple, just three steps. You sign your school up and you get access to all of our free tools. But everything is online and um, it's all, we have a, you'll get access to a portal that has the checklist and, and the toolkit and we have 
um, different languages and we have all kinds of ideas that are on there. Once you're signed up, then you print the checklist for all the students at your school and you can plan any other complimentary activities. And then on the last week of January, January 28th, February 1st, um, you just you distribute that checklist and, and celebrate the joys of kindness. Um, many people ask, do we have to do it that week? Um, for, and we say, you do not. Um, you can do it whenever is the best week for your school. Um, we really value you knowing what is the, how it, what's best for your school. So we um, support you doing that whenever you can. So there's two ways of going at the Great Kindness Challenge. You can keep it super simple and just focusing on the Great Kindness Challenge checklist, or you can go big with it. Um, a lot of schools like to start small and try it out, and then the next year, they're like, that was so much fun, we want to do more and keep adding to it. Um, so the keeping it simple is, sim is simply making copies of the checklist, distributing them, distributing them to all students, and then encouraging the students to complete those checklists. If you only do that, it's going to be successful. It, it is enough having every child, every student at your school play a role in creating a culture of kindness with that checklist as the guide. Um, we find, though, the schools that go a bit bigger have a multiplied effect within the campus. And so there's um, kickoff ideas, there's ways to engage your community, spirit day ideas, and school-wide service projects. And we have a global service project that we invite you all to be participating in as well. Both of these examples we're going to give you today are of schools that have gone big with the Great Kindness Challenge. Um, I'm going to be introducing Laurel now uh, from Jefferson Elementary, and um, I have to just brag again a little bit because that's the school that my children went to. They're, they're now a senior in high school and a, um, in college, um, but kindness is in their, in their foundation of who they are. And so much of that is, well, hopefully because of me as a mom, um, but, but I really give so much of the credit to the school itself for a place in the value on kindness, giving the opportunities for them to be active participants in creating that culture of kindness. So with that said, I'm so grateful to Jefferson Elementary for being a founding Great Kindness Challenge School, and I welcome Laurel to share what you do at Jefferson. Hello. Thank you. You're so kind, Jill. Um, it's been wonderful to start off with the Great Kindness Challenge eight years ago, and Jill was so instrumental in helping guide us, and I'm sure there are many parents at your sites that would love to help bring this to your school. So please make sure that you include all of you know, your community and families. So the Great Kindness Challenge, which is in the end of January, which is such a great time because everybody's making resolutions. It's a fresh start to a year. Um, and I'm gonna go through some of the steps we take to prepare or participate and celebrate in our Great Kindness Challenge. So one of the best ways to start off, we, we are a Title I school. We do have many second language learners. So we do make sure we put up a lot of our information in English and Spanish, because that happens to be the other language that a lot of our families speak. So if you notice also in the slide, we have students helping us out. Kids love to help. They're kind by nature, and giving them the opportunities to actually participate and be contributors is um, a big part of the Kindness Challenge Week. For the other part is actually getting the decorations. So we want to make it kid friendly. And if you notice the signs, they are a lot of handiwork of the students. And one of the things just to be kind to our planet too, we usually save our signs and we build up our stockpile over the years because it just helps that. And then the other thing is the brainstorming that comes along with creating those signs. So not just giving the kindness matters to the students to copy, but to actually have them come up with some of the themes and ideas. And they really start to build and collaborate with each other on what messages of kindness and peace they want to bring to our planet. So it's a great activity in class to help promote. Then another way that we use those signs are the actual first Monday that we begin the Great Kindness Challenge. We have everybody come to school early. If you notice, there are some parents in the background. We actually invite the mayor, the uh, firefighters, police force, other community members, school board, and we just make it 
like a huge festival celebration of just welcoming people to school. It's a great way to get um, almost better than a phone call home to parents that we're working on the kindness challenge this week when they drive up and drop off their kids. So make sure you invite those community members. And then after we do that, we actually go into our auditorium. And if you've noticed, there's our firefighters in the slide. The kids, we do a kindness uh, challenge tunnel. And if you look at the smiles, just to have parents and adults within the community cheering on kids and actually knowing that they have their back is, is so powerful and inspiring. Once we get into the auditorium, oops, sorry, I'm gonna jump a slide real quick. Once we're in the auditorium, um, we have a skit that we usually do and we have either Jill has helped us write it, or parents, or have the kids do contributions. And if you're a little nervous about writing a script, I definitely would recommend going off the checklist. So as Jill mentioned, when you sign up, you get this checklist. And there's so many things that you can do in this assembly just to kick it off. For example, um, the, one of the things on the checklist is smile at 25 people. So to make your uh, assembly engaging, we would say, okay, now smile at 25 people. The other thing that we like to do is little scenarios like one of the things on the checklist is lend a pencil to a friend and we have two kids act that out or tell a joke to a new friend or say thank you <clears throat> to the crossing guard. Start thinking about who you're saying thank you to. And then kind of to the coup d'etat at the end is we end up having a dance off between the firefighters and the police department. But you could easily do this with teachers or teachers in fifth graders or kindergarten and fifth grade. But one of the things on the checklist is do a happy dance, and it just kind of sets the tone for the whole week. Um, one of the other things that I wanted to mention about the checklist is um, it really guides you. One of the things, as I said, kids like to help and contribute is not having the teacher monitor all the checklists. I mean, it is an honor system. But a lot of times I'll have a parent volunteer get like a folder and put a class list on it. And then we assign, we either nominate two kindness ambassadors within the classroom to collect the sheets once they're fulfilled. And we last year we tried something new too where we had a little happy sticker and when the student fulfilled it, we had them sign their name on it and then there was a classroom poster and they got to go put up their sticker. And it was just kind of a proud moment and you know, showing how many of the kids are participating in kindness. Also with uh, little ones, there is that smaller checklist, which is really nice. Um, it's probably a good way to start if you're a little nervous about your little guys. Uh, the other nice thing about that is you can actually promote, let's say they finish the checklist, keep going with that kindness with um, other pieces that you can do. And I have some more pictures coming up of what you can do. Um, <clears throat> one of the other activities that we like to do is have our parent volunteers set up lunchtime activities to help get through those 50 um, items on the checklist, but also to keep the spirit going. So just going a little bit beyond that kickoff assembly, but um, something forward that, I mean, something that students can look forward to at lunchtime. So we might have, um, like help the custodian, or you could even do that within your classroom. That's one of the things on the checklist is just cleaning, organizing, getting ready. And it's a nice way to come back in the morning to remember that everybody cooperated and worked together. Um, for your little guys to like art class, make a picture for a friend. I mean, you could or incorporate it into your art class. Um, one of the other things, oh, uh, sorry, I'm a little nervous. One of the things that we do at the school is we're, we're proud about taking action. So we have students create an action wall and actually write and reflect about what they're doing with kindness. I know some people get worried, well, they're just going to check off everything on the list. But truly, 
so many students really pride themselves on going through the checklist and then carrying that beyond the checklist. And it's a great academic part just to have them writing about it and reflecting. Some, if you have those writers who are not sure, they go right off the checklist. Others uh, model and go beyond the checklist, which is really inspirational for not only the students, but for the whole school. Other things that we do, um, these are actually our little TK guys doing their kindness portfolios. So like I said, they do the checklist. Um, these students finish their checklist and they wanted to go beyond. So we ended up creating portfolios for them and they're sharing all their stories and items they have dictated or created in their kindness folder to each other. So it's a great way to practice your listening and speaking skills, sharing uh, your learning. It, it's pretty powerful. <clears throat> For our other one is getting your leadership involved. You know what, it's pretty impressive to see uh, your leaders be risk takers and show that kindness matters. Um, this actual picture was a pretty big risk by our principal who was jumping out of an airplane. So it's another great way to uh, attract attention and media too that kindness does matter and we can reach beyond our school walls. Another one is we have a parent group where we're trying to really bridge kindness and communication within our parents. And before the kindness week, we actually had our parents come in from many countries writing messages of kindness for students and support. Uh, one of the unexpected gifts that we got, that we've given, we have received over the last few years is the other kind schools around us have dropped off messages of kindness, banners. Uh, one year, because we are a Title I school, we aren't as affluent as some of our surrounding schools. They helped us get our mascot for the school, so we were just like everyone else, and it was an amazing piece. We have been so thankful. Another one is really promoting community service. So sometimes for schools that Jill is helping put together in other countries, we are uh, creating kind packages with items that they could use in other countries and it just builds awareness of how lucky we are and how to be thankful for what we have. And this is our wishing well. Um, like I said, Jill has done so much around the world in helping students and build schools. We do a little wishing well with coins to help um, support schools in other countries, even though our students aren't very affluent. It's pretty amazing to see how many students will come and contribute coins and every little bit helps. And it's that message that we try to pass on to kids that every act of kindness helps build something better in this world. And then the last thing, during this whole week, if you do decide to go big, I would definitely recommend contacting the media ahead of time. There are so many nightly newscasts that we hear with news around the world and how amazing that your students could be the highlight of the news with the Kindness Challenge, be the change, creating awareness beyond your uh, school walls is quite amazing. And I really, I have to say I love the part with all the research that Jill shows how much the kindness matters and the impact and change. If, if you want student engagement, you need to respect them as a human and, and go for that kindness as a uh, human being. And it does lead to academic success, success and reach beyond the walls. And I just want to remind you that the checklist is an amazing uh, piece to just start with and build from there with ideas. So thank you, Jill, and I'm gonna turn it over. Thank you, Laurel, wow. It's so fun to see everything you've done at Jefferson, and I know there's so much more that you didn't have an opportunity to put in those slides, too. It's so inspiring, so thank you for your incredible leadership there. Well, thank you um, for inviting most, me. Most of, things, uh, most of the um, activities that you saw there are in the toolkit. 
um, that you'll be getting when you sign up. So even the assemblies, there's full scripts that are in there that you can adapt for your school and um, you can use as a good starting point on there. But all those ideas um, and how to do them are found in our toolkit. Um, so these are some of the tips that we um, have found for a successful Great Kindness Challenge, I think, um, in collaborating, collaborating with Jefferson. Um, keeping the Great Kindness Challenge checklist at the center of the week so all students can participate. Um, use the Great Kindness Challenge toolkit for all your planning. Um, it really is a very full, inclusive, turnkey tool for you. Um, engage your teachers with the Teacher Kindness Kit. We'll tell a little bit more about that, but we found that when the teachers are fully engaged, then um, that leads to the greatest success for the um, Great Kindness Challenge. Involve your community. Um, start small and then build upon your success and re recruit a team to help with planning and have fun. It really is the happiest week of the year. So those are all tips we got from Jefferson Elementary School. Um, I'm now going to speak for Leah Caravella. Um, she is a middle school counselor in Cedar Grove, New Jersey, a memorial middle school. Um, she has just done an amazing job over the years. We've been so inspired every year with the themes that she's created and the very innovative ways that she engages all of her students to be part. Um, we're excited to showcase what Leah's done because she is a middle school uh, counselor and she's really found a way at that crucial middle school time to um, keep kindness fresh and fun and meaningful for her students. So every year Leah creates a theme and um, she's had different themes which will showcase them. This one first year it was reach out with your kind hearted hand and she did that um, in partnership, we did a um, Guinness World Record for the Great Kindness Challenge where we collected handprints all over. So she um, found a way to make that her own with that beautiful, beautiful um, banner there. Another theme was kindness comes for them, from the heart. And so every theme, she engages her students in showcasing that theme each year. And then she runs that through the Great Kindness Challenge and then puts a banner that stays up there. Um, another theme was um, Smile Makers Be Kind, and um, she did a whole big focus on smiles, and there's different ways I'll um, also share of how she incorporated that. Another theme was um, Be Kind, Shine Bright Like a Star, so she did a whole star theme. And you can see here um, in this slide that, that the top is um, the top two pictures are showcasing the students that um, Leah rotates in through their, um, I believe it's their multi-purpose room, and then she has them create, here they were creating stars for the banner, and she also has them creating ornaments that get delivered um, to different people in need for different causes, which we'll be showcasing in a second. So Leah finds a way to really um, engage all of the students so they're all rotating through, which is really beautiful to give everyone a touch point on kindness. Um, she does assemblies, and Lee's also done a great job getting the media out there to cover hers. Um, so she does kick off with assemblies. Um, she does spirit days. Um, she's found fun ways to um, keep the, the students of this age engaged. They, there was a sports attire with the, um, being on team kindness. There's kindness ties us together where all the students wear ties. Um, there's wear red to show that kindness comes from the heart. Um, we have lots of high schoolers that have been doing spirit days, and we have a lot of fun ideas and that we take from the different schools that are in the toolkit also. Um, she also, we encourage um, schools to do a heart formation, so Leah just participates in all the different fun ways that we um, elevate to the Great Kindness Challenge. Um, Leah reads the book Wonder with her students. Um, I believe it's with her eighth grade students every year, and um, for those of you who don't know of the book, which is probably none of you. Um, it is such a beautiful story about kindness and the, the power of it. So she incorporates that um, through the Great Kindness Challenge and throughout the year, the power of kindness. Um, Leah does kindness for staff. Um, she has students help make these um, different little, um, like either goodie bags or or um, kindness kits. There's a um, Duncan to kindness with donuts. Um, there's just uh, other ways to let the teachers know that she appreciates them and that the, that the students appreciate them. So she keeps the sweetness of kindness going. Um, Leah participates in the Kind Coins campaign that we have every year. We'll be speaking more to that. But she has done an amazing job getting the students to um, find ways to raise coins. Um, as Laurel said, a little bit can go a long way. Really the power of collective action too. 
So she's participated every year and helped us build our school in Kenya. She helped us build a school in Pakistan. She helped us build um, support, three, build three playgrounds in hurricane affected areas. And we'll tell you later about our next campaign coming soon. Um, Leah's really, really big on kind community service. Um, she, she's such a great model for her students and giving them the opportunity to um, practice compassion by doing ser service in the community. So here she spent time at a senior center, um, a sen senior center visit. Um, she's done care bags for the homeless where she had her kids. She has the um, Misty's Kindness Club, or Misty's Kindness Group. She had them um, making these kindness bags and then she went and delivered them as well as um, has some students help deliver them as well to, to homeless in, in four different states. Um, she also d uh, made smile ornaments and um, they were delivered to a children's hospital. Um, we had our Kindness Matters bus tour last year and we were one of our stops, so she got us um, smiley face ornaments to give to the patients there. Um, Leah is really wonderful at involving the business also. So she has, um, she has a, a restaurant that she works with every year and they give these certificate um, for incentives for students who are participating in the Great Kindness Challenge. So she goes out and just asks, and usually when you ask, the community says yes. She also um, has other incentives, you know, our Kindness Matters pencils that she gives to her students. So she just finds all different ways to keep the students engaged. Um, she has been great in getting media exposure. Um, in our toolkit, we have a whole section on how to get the media involved. We have a sample media alert, a sample press release. We have tips on how to get the media there. And um, we find that the media really is looking for those um, feel-good stories. And it's just such a beautiful, beautiful story for the media. So you're doing them a favor by reaching out. And then when the students see that they are being valued by the media that way, that, that it just adds to the importance of what they're doing and it carries on the value of kindness. Um, some other, these aren't um, exactly Leah's ideas here, but some of our other uh, favorite middle and high school ideas uh, are positive post-its on lockers and positive messages in, ba in bathrooms. So these are two um, slides that came right from the schools. Um, there's other ways of spreading kindness on campus. There's um, one of the a kindness, uh, one of the high schools made kindness matters and just had um, kisses out and smiley bu um, balloons out for the students. Another one, I forget what that one is, um, in the top right hand corner. Um, I think well, it was powered by kindness and it was power aid, like a Gatorade, yes. And then others did um, um, treats, um, kindness treats that for their other classmates. Um, also really recommend um, the school to school kindness. For the middle and high schoolers, um, it's great if you're able to go to your local elementary school and um, partner with either being part of the kindness community tunnel or come and do some of the acts of kindness with them. But the elementary schools love it and the high school students love it. Um, social media kindness campaign, a lot of elementary schools are, are, I mean, excuse me, a lot of the middle and high schools are working on showcasing um, positive social media and then using the Great Kindness Challenge as a um, launching ground for that. And then a lot of schools have done different giant school formations. Um, we love this one with the spelling out kindness matters on the football field. Um, we we encourage schools to do big hearts. You saw that big smiley face. Um, so there's all different um, positive ways to unite the community and make a message of kindness. So now we want to share um, different one-week sample plans of what a one-week can look like. Um, there's this is. This is kind of doing a blend of um, keeping it simple and, and going big, so it's um, a very manageable start. So for elementary school, um, on Monday, we um, actually for both middle and elementary and high school, we recommend distributing the checklist or the app um, on Monday, and then doing an assembly, kicking off the Kind Coins survey, um, kick, the, excuse me, Kind Coins project, service project. On Tuesday, um, doing actually Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, we found a great success in just doing a kindness quote in the morning. If you have an assemb if you have a, a speaker system, we've um, heard of schools who are inviting different guests to come in, having the fire chief come in and read a quote. If you have any celebrities, any um, sports stars in your community, to invite them in and read the kindness quote over the loudspeaker. 
um, recess kindness stations are a big hit to help as a place to um, complete the acts of kindness there from the checklist and then different spirit days every day and then on the Friday to do a celebration assembly and again we have um, scripts in the toolkit that give you ideas of how to do that and, and wrapping that up um, for the middle school and high school and um, we found that the best time to distribute the, je the checklist is in English class um, majority of schools um, ha have English as the common class for freshmen through senior years and through all seventh, um, sixth, seventh, eighth grades. So we find that's the best time to distribute the checklist. And then to kick it off, if you, there's a school segment, a school TV, um, to be able to kick it off on the television if, if they have that at your school. And then it's sim similar to the elementary school, doing kindness quotes every day, doing um, kindness stations at your lunch break, um, and doing spirit days. So those are just some simple plans um, that you could use. We find, um, like Laurel said, it's really great when you engage your students in the planning of it. Um, every school that we've seen um, have great success when they do this. There's different ways to engage them. They can be part of the whole pre-planning, and um, they can be the ones who are deciding the spirit days. They can decide on the different um, activities they want to do at the recess stations, if they want to do recess stations. They can help to create the teacher kindness kit, and we will be um, showcasing what a teacher kindness kit is. Um, they can help write the kickoff rally or assembly. Um, they can choose the kindness quotes. They can run the kindness stations themselves. And then the best way to engage every single student again is to do the checklist. Let's do it. So engaging your teachers. Um, it's very helpful when the teachers are on board, and it's helpful when they have enough uh, pre-warning, pre-notice of the Great Kindness Challenge. So we have Save the Date cards that you can, um, electronic version of it, to provide to your teachers and make sure it gets on your school calendar. Um, you can give them the weekly plan and share that with them and distribute teacher kindness kits. So to the left is an example of a teacher kindness kit. This comes from one of our favorite um, Great Kindness Challenge schools in Arkadelphia, Arkadelphia, Arkansas, um, Central Primary, and um, they go all out every year. And in the teacher kindness kits, for each teacher gets one of those bags. It has all the checklists for the student. It has some sort of incentive for the for the teacher. It has the weekly plan in it and um, some other incentives um, that they might choose. I know some schools do a uh, kindness matters pencil for every student, so they put those in there to easily distribution or they might do stickers, so whatever is in that kit, and then the students deliver those to each of the teachers. That really helps. Um, engaging your community. So there's all ways to engage your community. You can um, have them participate in kickoff activities. Um, if you do any kind of contests, kind of contests, like um, essay contests or door decorating contests, they can be the judges for that. They can read the daily kindness quotes that I mentioned. They can volunteer at kindness stations. Um, they can provide incentives. Um, like um, like Leah does with the restaurant, having them provide um, the restaurant coupons for restaurant certificates for their participants. Um, you can have the community donate the printed checklist. Um, you can have the you can honor the students with a proclamation. Um, we have an example of the proclamation in our toolkit as well, and um, it really makes the students again feel important when their elected officials come in and show the value of kindness. And then um, community service projects. Um, more and more schools are taking, um, going beyond the checklist and doing some community service projects. There's food drives, there's senior center visits, there's sack lunches for the homeless, um, and the Kind Coins campaign that they're part of. So you can really unite your students with the project and respond to whatever needs you have in your community. And um, again, we'll be telling you more about our current Kind um, Cards response for the California wildfires, specifically for a paradise school. That's a, one of our great kind of challenge family. Um, next is media outreach. As I mentioned um, earlier, we do have a toolkit. I mean, in our toolkit, the whole section of how to plan for media success. So it's a really helpful tool. Um, so we can make sure to, to take a look at that. Every year we do another um, a unifying global service project or a unifying service project. And it's another way for kids to, one, activate um, the, on the checklist there is an um, act of kindness is make a wish for a child in another country. So it's a really beautiful way to put that, that act of kindness into action. Um, our toolkit has other, a whole section.
multiple ways to do that. And um, this year we are doing the Kind Coins for Liberia. We will be building a brand new school. Um, I'm actually flying out tomorrow to go to Liberia with our um, filmmaker and we'll be creating a um, campaign video telling the story of a child in Liberia. So your students can really learn about what life is like there, what their needs are there, and really um, connect to a child in another country. So um, that video will be coming out, that whole campaign, all those campaign materials will be coming out within the month. And once we're back, it usually takes us about three weeks to get that out. So there's an opportunity for you to be, your students to be global philanthropists and really connect and be good global citizens. Um, next is um, ways to engage your families. So we've heard from so many schools um, that they are loving um, doing practicing kindness at home, but they wanted to, um, did I say at home? Yes, practicing kindness at school, excuse me. But they wanted to carry it on at home to have their families also practice it, to have that continuity. So we always like to listen and respond to the needs of our Great Kindness Challenge community. And with that, we um, created our um, Great Kindness Challenge Family Edition. Um, you can um, sign up to get copies of it for your entire school network, um, or you can just send your families themselves to our website to sign up and get it. Another free tool um, that's there. And there is a, a nice parent letter that we have that explains what we're doing for the Great Kindness Challenge. So you have that opportunity. Um, every school that participates in the Great Kindness Challenge becomes kindness certified. So at the end of the Great Kindness Challenge, we'll send you a seal and a certificate um, electronically stating that you are a kindness certified school. Um, we see a lot of schools who then um, showcase this on their websites um, and use it in their social media to, to say that they really value kindness and they, that they have been recognized for being a kindness certified school. So you can look forward to doing that, um, receiving that once you participate in the 2019 Great Kindness Challenge. So with all of that, um, I see some good questions coming in, and um, I'd love to turn it over to Sarah to ask some of those questions. Yes, thank you, Jill. That was amazing. Those were wonderful. Um, Laurel, you are getting so many compliments and the questions in the comments. Everybody thinks you're great. Um, so those were great ideas, and we do. We have some really good questions, and I think it's fascinating. A lot of the questions are around making this accessible um, and inclusive for specific learning environments, for specific um, student populations. So it's really exciting to see that everyone's thinking in that framework. Um, so the first question, Jill, I think will be for you. Are these resources available in um, different languages, specifically Spanish, French, and uh, Korean folks are looking for? Yes, so um, currently the, the checklist and the parent letter is, is in Spanish. Um, and in French, so both of those um, for the great kind of, for the school edition in, in Spanish and French. Our family edition also is in um, Spanish. We're working on some other translations, so we will great. we will be working on those other ones. Wonderful. And you guys, you can visit the Great Kindness Challenge .com. Go sign your school up and everything. Um, I just posted the link in the chat box so you can get it there. Um, be sure to check out the handouts too for some supplemental resources. Um, our second question that I thought was really exciting um, Have you ever had an online school attend the program? And if so, or perhaps if not, how do you think that you, know, you might be able to adapt the activities to make them accessible when you don't have that physical space? Yes, yeah, that's a wonderful question, and, and we love um, to know that it is expanding to all educational um, learning um, facilities opportunities. So we have had on, we've had um, school homeschool communities do the Great Kindness Challenge, um, and the there's absolutely it's adaptable for the online community. Um, there are certain the, the toolkit will give you a lot of ideas of um, of how to do that. I think that the family edition checklist would probably be the best checklist if you're not actually in a school building, because a lot of them are very school-centric, um, the acts of kindness on that one. But the family edition checklist is really great for um, at home and, and out into the community. So I would recommend just um, using that checklist. And then um, there's so many like social media campaigns that they can do, um, opportunity if they do ever come together. I know that some of our homeschools do a lot of it online, but then meet once a week, so if it's something like that, then they could do some projects together, or they can challenge each other to go out and do their own community service 
they can definitely participate in our Kind Coins um, campaign um, and help and, and see that they're, um, you know, that they're part of that global movement that's there. So we absolutely welcome the online community. And if the toolkit itself doesn't give you enough guidance, we are here completely for you to help to brainstorm and help to really customize it and make it successful for all of your students. That's great. No, it's so interesting to see the way that that family toolkit can be changed as well and then adapted. Um, we had some questions, some interest around the kindness quilt that you had mentioned in the beginning. I think folks were just looking to get a little bit of an expansion on that, a few more details to how that's going to be used. Um, yes, yeah, so what we're so excited about this is that the quilt is a is a really great symbol of connection. I mean, it's such a it's such a beautiful um, symbol of that. So we are still working out some of the details of exactly how that's going to work, but but um, we're hoping to launch it on Good Morning America again this year. And we've been um, fortunate to be showcased on Good Morning America for the last two years, and that was really helped to um, add more momentum to the Great Kindness Challenge. So our our plan is on the Monday, the Great Kindness Challenge, we're going to launch it on Good Morning America, and then we're going to be sending it to off to the first school in another, we'll be in New York then, so we'll send it off to another school um, in another state, and then um, they will already have the base of the quilt done, and then the next school will add uh, a quilt to it, a, pet, a patch to it. We're creating a whole tracker system, so we're going to have a GPS in it so we can see where it's going to go from school to school, and we're going to have a page on our website about it. We'll probably have a sign up on the page, a website page, to so schools who want to get it sent to them, that they'll just sign up and then we'll make sure it gets sent. So we're still a little bit working the details of that out. Um, we want to make sure that you, um, when you sign up for the Great Kindness Challenge, you automatically get signed up for our newsletter. We do find that a lot of our newsletters are making it into people's spam folders and they're not getting our materials and that's where we'll give you all the details. So please, um, if you're not getting, once you're signed up, if you're not getting information from us, know that something's amiss because you should be. We will be doing at least once a month and probably about twice a month leading up to the Great Kindness Challenge with details. And that's where we'll be giving exactly how to participate in the Great Kindness Quilt. Thanks, Jill. Um, we had another question come in um, sort of before you had gotten to how it applies to middle and high school. But that's a question that we've had in previous webinars as well. Um, so I think it would be worth revisiting just for a moment um, how, you know, this activity can meet the needs of, of middle and high school students, um, how it can be adapted, things that you've seen done successfully um, along those lines. Yes. So um, we really, we have found um, so many middle and high schoolers now participating in it. Um, we don't even think it has to be adapted anymore. We think it just is um, appropriate. One thing with the checklist is, is using the app has been really helpful. And our app is available in both um, Android and in, in iOS. And uh, so it, the, whatever, so if you have, um, whatever kind of iPads you might have or on their phones, they can do that. So that's helpful for the um, older students. And then um, the toolkit does have a lot of ideas that are specific for the middle and high school. Um, but just having the, the student engagement, um, having them be part of the planning, whether it be student body or if there's a club that, some kind of inclusion club, um, we know they have been successful in planning the Great Kindness Challenge for the schools. Really involving the kids, the students themselves in the planning of it has led to the success because they know what's really going to be um, meaningful to their their um, fellow classmates. So that would be a, a big tip is, is engaging them. And something else, again, that we've seen really, really successful is the, the school to school, the, the cross age kindness. When they can go in it, um, to the younger, the older students go into the younger um, schools, it really elevates their sense of, of self. And um, it's so successful and, and such a positive experience for both ages. Um, so if there's any way to make that happen, um, we we really recommend that. And then letting them be part of um, service projects, letting them plan a service project, responding to a need that's out there in their community, um, you know, tapping into their um, what matters to them, and have, helping them to create service projects um, that are for the community. Um, those are that's been really meaningful for other schools that have been successful at the Great Kindness Challenge. So I hope that helps. But our toolkit, I keep bringing yeah. people back to the toolkit. The toolkit really is a great, um, has a lot of very 
um, very clear, simple, and um, powerful ideas to engage the middle and high schoolers. Absolutely. Um, and I wanted to make a note, I've seen a couple people are starting to drop off, but they said, oh, I don't want to miss anything. Um, do remember that this will be available on demand if you guys want to revisit anything, if you want to send it along. Someone just told me that they were hoping to share it with their principal um, to bring it to the school. So do know that this is available on demand. An email will go out to you guys, and you'll be able to revisit particular moments, um, do some sharing. And then, Joe, one last question. And, Laurel, if you are still on, this might be something that you can chime in on as well. Um, since we've had a, a lot around um, making sure this is in, you know, accessible um, and inclusive, ways to include um, English learners. Laurel, I know you touched on that. I think that could be um, something that this audience would, would be helpful for. So one of the things is honoring the home language, but also I know Jill mentioned for the upper grades with going to the English class, but it's really interesting for part of our language arts you saw our action walls and other pieces, but having students be able to write about actions that they actually took helps build language because it, it's going, you know, from a concrete experience into expressing what you know. And if you, so it's a wonderful way to have students writing and it, reflecting on what they're learning, even to the younger ages. So if you saw we had those little four year olds. You know, for your kids building language, all that listening and speaking and collaborating, it's, it's a beautiful way to tie in uh, student engagement, academic, with that kindness. So your social emotional growth, it's, it's powerful. That's fantastic. I love that. Yeah. And we have. And Sarah, to add to that, too. Yeah. Sarah, to add to that, um, on the checklist, one of the acts of kindness is um, learn to say hello in another language. And it's just showcasing um, the importance of the other languages and the value of, of other languages. So, and that there's an opportunity to build upon that act of kindness as well and the inclusive nature of, of that. And I actually have to say, when, when you start with one language, they want to know more. So then they start asking questions like, how do you say this in Tagalog? And, you know, oh, the school they're going over in Liberia, I'm sure I will get that question this year. You know, and how to write a kindness note using that language. So, uh, you know, all good questions, all good connections. Absolutely. That's wonderful. And Joey has one last question. Um, people are actually downloading the app already. Yay. Um, Trudy <laughs> downloaded it, and she said, you know, she's seeing that it's a start now. Um, and so she said if she wants to check it out, would she be able to sort of restart it, you know, to make it useful um, when she actually, you know, launches? Yes, you can start it now, and then you could do a reset um, when it's the start of the Great Kindness Challenge. So awesome. go for it. Yeah. And <laughs> look at it ahead of time. Wonderful. Yes. Okay. So I think we've addressed all of the questions that we have. I have a lot of folks who are, like, ready to go. They're already, you know, out there and working. This is wonderful. Um, I hope that we have inspired all of you to take this to your classrooms. I know at McGraw-Hill, um, we are extremely passionate about, about this program. Um, I think it can do wonders. Um, so thank you, Jill, and thank you, Laurel, for taking the time to um, share this with us. Um, thanks to yes, all of and you. Thank you to Leah. Yes. And Leah, yes. yes. And Leah. Yes, thank you, Leah. Leah has, <laughs> yes, she, she contributed so much to this, to building this up and to helping um, tell her story. Uh, especially as we're looking to really help all of you who are looking to, um, you know, support your secondary students. Um, it's really great to have everything that Leah's been able to, to share with us. Yes. So with that, um, thank you all, and we are so happy to have you, and good luck. Again, we are here for you. If you need anything, you reach out to us. Our information is on that last slide. and. We're so grateful and um, we look forward to spreading more kindness with you.